Now there is a connection between, uh, important connection between resonance and standing waves. If you remember, we talked about resonance last semester, that was the last week of, the la of last semester. And uh, I would like you to try to remember, what was the main idea of resonance? What we di did we discuss uh, then? A material is natural, a natural resonance frequency. They have a driving force that applied at that frequency, the amplitude would build up as the driving force is applied to eventually very large amplitude. That's right. So the uh, ingredients for uh, talking about resonance are a system that can oscillate, right? And then a driving force, a force that is applied to the system, some sort of thing that is perturbing the system. And there will be a resonance, a buildup of amplitude. The system will respond by vibrating. And that amplitude of the vibrations will be large uh, depending on what's the frequency of the uh, driving force the perturbation that you're adding to the system, if that uh, uh, frequency matches the, what we call the natural frequency of the system, then you get this large buildup of, of, of a vibration in this kind of system. So we talked about, for example, uh, a bridge having a natural frequency because of the way it's built and the, all the materials, any solid material has a certain degree of elasticity. So a bridge will have a particular frequency and if you somehow apply, the wind applies a force or people walking on the bridge apply a force, even though it's, if it's small, but if you let a small force with the right frequency act for a long time, it builds up amplitude. It builds up amplitude, okay? So uh, then that can cause the destruction of the bridge, even though the force in, in strength is small. But the uh, fact that the frequency of the force matches the natural frequency, it's the main ingredient there, right? So what is the connection with, uh, for example, the demo that we saw uh, last class, where I applied a force here with a little speaker thing that had a rod in the middle, and it was connected here, and it was producing a perturbation of the system, right? And we noticed that if the frequency was right, then you get this buildup of a, a standing wave, right? When there was no standing wave, you probably noticed that the vibrations didn't look very nice, not, didn't look very organized, and the amplitude was small. It was this kind of vibrations, right? But when the frequency is just right, when the frequency of the speaker matches the natural frequency of the system, then even though I had a very small amplitude of the perturbation here, it build up a considerable amplitude in the standing wave. So that is exactly the same thing that is, uh, we discuss when talking about resonance. <coughs> the thing to add to the discussion of resonance is that when the system can vibrate, has these uh, kind of oscillations, well, first of all, there's not going to be only one natural frequency. The system is going to have a set of natural frequencies. That set of natural frequencies is what we call, last class, we call them the uh, frequencies of the standing waves, right? So you have a three-dimensional body. If you hit it, it can vibrate in different ways. Each one of those different ways in which that object can vibrate has a frequency associated with it. Just like this has a frequency associated with a mode that oscillates up and down like this, and then there is another frequency associated with a standing wave that has two homes, and there is another frequency for the vibration that has three, and so on. There is a set, infinite in this case, of uh, frequencies at which the system can vibrate. If you apply a, a perturbing force to that system and it matches one of those frequencies, boom, magic. The amplitude of the system grows by a lot. Okay? That could be desirable, that could be undesirable, depending on the kind of system that you have.